Apple was a dominant force before the pandemic, but life at home has only accelerated its growth. Every branch on the Apple tree is blossoming lately with record revenues for the App Store, Apple Music, and its cloud services as well. And they keep planting more. Apple TV launched in November and Apple Radio made its debut on Tuesday. Longtime tech investor Roger McNamee joins us live now from San Francisco. So Roger, Richard uh, touched on this earlier just a second ago in his piece. But when you think about the fact that year to date, Apple shares have risen about 60 percent, despite the fact that the broader economy is suffering and there are just so many economic woes given the pandemic, it's quite remarkable. Well, I think the first part of this is that the stock market has done remarkably well because the Fed has been incredibly attentive to the needs of investors and the need to eliminate fear. They've done a brilliant job of that. And so Apple has been a huge beneficiary. But the other thing that I always look at when I'm looking at Apple is how perfect Tim Cook turned out to be for the iPhone, that Steve Jobs was absolutely necessary for creating the iPhone, but the commercializing of it going global, building a huge relationship in China. Those are things that suited Tim Cook perfectly. And he has done, I think, a masterful job. What's tricky for investors today is that the threats to Apple are largely external. You know, even though they are at peak iPhone, the opportunity in services, the opportunities in privacy and some of these other categories are huge. But the external issues, I think, right now are something we not only need to pay attention to, but I think should be genuinely worried about. So just because you touched on Tim Cook, I mean, do you think that just in terms of iconic leadership, Tim Cook is actually on par with Steve Jobs, at least when it comes to giving shareholders what they want? Well, to be clear, I think Tim Cook was the perfect guy for this period. And it's hard for me to imagine anyone else doing a better job than Tim Cook did in this environment. Because again, he starts with the iPhone. And the question was not creating the iPhone, but in fact, making the most of it. And it's really hard to argue with the success of Apple to this point. The challenge they face, of course, is that they've built a really substantial business in China and risk being a ping pong ball in the Cold War that's developing between the United States and China right now. And I think they also are in the crosshairs of regulators in the U.S. over antitrust. And I think they have real issues uh, politically in that regard because companies, you know, the, the folks Epic who make uh, uh, one of the most popular games on earth is challenging Apple's rules in the App Store on the heels of an antitrust hearing where Apple was called to task for the way it prices. It doesn't do anything unusual, but the numbers have been so big to Apple that it makes it vulnerable to criticism. And I think that is a giant issue. I mean, when, and when you think about it from the perspective of antitrust and, and regulators, obviously you brought up some of the controversy concerning the App Store and the fact that they charge 30 percent fees for app developers, which a lot of them have been complaining about. Um, but just from the perspective of antitrust, does this underscore the notion, the fact that Apple is a $2 trillion company, does it underscore the notion that tech companies right now are simply far too big? Well, I think Apple is conspicuously different from Google, Facebook, and Amazon in that regard, because it does not have the kind of control of markets that those companies have. But Apple does control its own ecosystem. And even though the 30% it charges is comparable to what you see in air, in industries like uh, cable television, it has made Apple so much money. And I do think there is a real concern, at least I have it, that in Silicon Valley, the dominance of Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple does in fact limit innovation and certainly limits the opportunity for new startups. And I think in our economy and in our democracy, we want to be encouraging small businesses. We want to be encouraging innovation and startups. And let's face it, the country's had a negative policy on immigration. It's had a negative policy on supporting the needs of startups. It's really been very focused on empowering the powerful. And that has become politically a lot harder strategy to advocate. And I'm quite hopeful, candidly, even though I'm an investor, I am hopeful that we do revert, that we do, in fact, force competition to happen by reducing the market advantages that the largest companies have. And Apple, even though it behaves much better than Google, Facebook, and Amazon, is a huge company. And with the $2 trillion market cap, it is going to catch some of that flack. 
And just in terms of um, Apple basically being forced to innovate slightly more, I mean, you talk about the fact that Tim Cook has been excellent when it comes to the commercialization of the iPhone and Apple in general. He's been massively successful when it comes to making Apple money. But without new products, you know, without new inventions, can this sort of growth really be sustained long term, do you think? Yeah, so I, I think that the innovation complaint about Tim Cook is really misplaced for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. The iPhone is the arguably the greatest product ever created. I mean, there's never been a single product that's achieved more than the iPhone. So coming up with a encore to that was always going to be difficult. And candidly, I think what he's doing in services may turn out to be every bit as important as the iPhone. So I don't think that's the real issue. I think the real issue for Apple is the fact that the country's got a huge economic problem, and it's spent so much money on the bailout so far that largely went to rich people that we're going to see changes in the tax law next year. You're going to see it. it'll be much harder to buy stock back. You're going to see an increase in capital gains taxes. These are things that affect everyone. But Apple is a big winner is going to be affected also. I think you're going to see antitrust regulation. I think you're going to see privacy regulation. Apple could be a beneficiary of the privacy regulation. And I think you're going to see safety regulation in tech. And all of those things, I think, are just going to slow things down in the tech sector and make investors pause. And I think that's really what the risk is that we all face right now, that we just need to recognize that the market's been really good to us. And mm -hmm. there's a lot more risk in front of us then we are factoring into stock prices. I see. So for Apple, really the environment in the coming months within which Apple exactly. operates is going to be that much tougher. Uh, Roger, Matthew, that you have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Appreciate My it. pleasure. We ran out of time, sadly. Thanks, Thank you for joining us.